scripture comes from John chapter 6, verses 32 to 40. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose None of all that he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thank you, God. We have a children's message from PursueGod.org. Hold alt, hit tab again. Like do it twice. Hold alt, hit tab twice. You gotta hit play. Hey kids, today we're gonna talk about being hungry. I mean, really hungry. Get ready. Redeeming act 
that set them free from slavery in Egypt. What so many Jews didn't and still don't understand is that this meal prescribed by God also points to the redeeming acts of God in Jesus Christ. So let us pray that we might not miss all that God has revealed to us. Holy and redeeming God, since the fall of humanity and <coughs> sin, you have been preparing your people to recognize your redeeming power and receive your salvation. As you set your people free from slavery in Egypt, you have redeemed your people from slavery to sin in all ages and nations through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. As we recall the events of Jesus' final days, quiet our minds and open our hearts to receive all that you want us to know about you, your love and grace, our sin and redemption, and our partnership in your mission in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our scripture, Jesus declared to the crowd, It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. Jesus was referring to the manna that the Israelites ate in the desert. It was literally bread from heaven that appeared each morning and met the physical need of God's people. But now Jesus was sent from heaven to meet the spiritual need of God's people. Moses also gave the Jews the details of the Passover meal, which were prescribed by God in Exodus chapter 12, so that God's people would have a way to pass on the truth of God's redeeming love to every future generation. When Jesus gathered with his disciples to eat this meal, he revealed to them the final redemption this meal had been pointing to all along, the true bread of heaven. So let's take a deeper look at the symbolism in the Passover meal. They would have had a shank bone. I didn't have a lamb shank. <laughs> We have chicken legs in place for the lamb steak. <laughs> but the shank bone of a lamb reminded the Jews of the perfect lamb, which was sacrificed, so that the blood spread over their doorposts would cause the Spirit of the Lord to pass over their home and spare the firstborn son. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Paul calls Christ our Passover lamb, who has been sacrificed for us. By his blood, we are spared from the consequences of sin, which is death. The meal also includes matzo bread. I tried my hand at making matzo bread today. <laughs> uh, this is unleavened bread, meaning it was made without yeast. And they did not have time to let the dough rise. Also, yeast is always representative of sin in Scripture. Therefore, this bread represents the sinlessness of Christ. Three pieces of matzah are placed in a bag called an ichad, meaning one. One piece is broken in two, with one piece remaining in the bag and the other being wrapped in a cloth hidden and searched for after the meal by the children. Are you beginning to see how this matzo represents our triune God? One in three, three in one, God, the Father, Spirit, and Son, who is broken or sacrificed for our transgressions. Many Jews believe that the three matzo pieces are representative of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the fathers of their faith. However, the traditions around that little piece don't make a lot of sense. But when understood as representative of God the Father, Son, and Spirit, these traditions point to Christ's sacrifice, death, burial, and resurrection. The matzah is also striped and pierced, which remind us of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, 
and by his stripes we are healed. Carpus, which I may be pronouncing incorrectly, <laughs> uh, which is a vegetable, usually parsley, uh, is dipped in salt water. And it represents the hyssop, which was used to apply the blood of the lamb to the doorpost and used to also to give vinegar to Jesus when he was on the cross. The salt water represents tears of their bitter years in slavery in Egypt and slavery in sin. The bitter herbs uh, these days is represented by horseradish, which reminds the Jews that while in slavery, they were unable to offer sacrifices and worship God, which was more bitter than their slavery. Likewise, our separation from God because of our sin is more bitter than all of our suffering. It also reminds us of Jesus' separation from the Father while on the cross. Having taken all sin upon himself, he cried out, Why have you forsaken me? His separation from the Father in that moment was more bitter than the pain of the cross. Haraseth is a mix of apples, nuts, wine, and spices. It represents the mortar that the Israelites uh, made and used in their slavery. This is the only sweet element of the meal and is a reminder of hope and redemption. God promised to God promised to set them free from slavery, and God promised Adam and Eve that he would redeem all of humanity from sin. A boiled egg or a roasted egg was traditionally eaten when in mourning. It is included in the Passover meal as a reminder of the loss of the temple and the roasting of the sacrifices on the altar. It also reminds us of the disciples' mourning at Christ's sacrifice on the cross and while his body lay in the tomb. There are also four cups of wine used throughout the meal. The cup of sanctification, the cup of judgment, the cup of redemption, and the cup of praise. At the Last Supper, Jesus took the cup of redemption and used it as a symbol of the new covenant in his blood. Prior to that night and that meal, Jesus had taught the disciples and the crowds the truth, that I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. He even demonstrated that truth physically by feeding multitudes on only five loaves of bread and two fish and collecting 12 baskets full of leftovers. Jesus said, But you have seen me, and still you do not believe. Can you imagine being there among the crowds and witnessing all the mighty acts of Jesus and still not believing? Even the Roman soldier at his crucifixion said, Surely this was the Son of God. We have believed even though we have not seen these things. How could they have missed it? Yet there are people, even those who attend worship services and participate in the life of a church, who do not believe. As, as well as many more who do not hide their unbelief. They're simply not looking for God. Carolyn Moore wrote, Spiritual eyesight is something we must pursue, but there is a promise. If you look for God, you will find him. Jesus said he came to do the Father's will, and the Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. And Christ will raise them up at the last day. All who look for redemption and believe it comes only through Christ and therefore leave their sin on the cross of Christ will also share in the redemption of Christ. 
than the resurrection of Christ. Let's take this a step further. If you look for God, you will find him, and he will welcome you into his kingdom. When you have a family dinner with all your extended relatives, no doubt you have developed some traditions. You eat certain foods and you enjoy certain activities. I always loved uh, gathering at Grandma and Grandpa McLaughlin's house for Sunday and holiday dinners. I knew what foods we would eat and where everyone would sit around the table. I knew that Grandpa would talk about the sermon or the pastor and current political news. I knew that family stories would be shared. But I most looked forward to playing games around that table after the meal. We laughed and we had so much fun. We saw different sides of our relatives and made lots of memories together. Food brings us together and love binds us together. As we celebrate Holy Communion, we are brought together by food and tradition. If you don't look for God, it's just bread and juice and tradition. But if you look, you will find that the love of Christ displayed in this meal binds our hearts to one another and our souls to God. Gracious God, your anointed one on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully, grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord who in these holy mysteries gives us the pledge of eternal life. Amen. Would you turn with me to page 12 in your hymnal? Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. 
by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, do this as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to come as you are ready.
Our closing hymn is number 622. There is a fountain filled with blood. We'll sing verses number 1 through 4.
El mega peace be with you all.